Hey guys, thanks for joining me for today's art lesson. We're switching gears, we're heading back to art today. I'm really excited about this one. So today we are talking about the American artist, Robert Indiana. Can you say the name Robert Indiana with me? Ready, one, two, three. Robert Indiana. So Robert Indiana was an American artist. That means that he's from the United States. This is a picture of him right behind me. He's actually standing in front of one of his most famous art pieces. Okay, so today when we talk about him, we're going to talk about his life, we're going to talk about his art, and really just what made him stand out so, so much. So Robert Indiana was born in 1928. It was a really long time ago. That was 92 years ago. And he was from the United States, from the state of Indiana. So if you didn't notice, his name and his state where he's from are the same. And that's no accident. He did that on purpose. So Robert Indiana was actually born with a different name. So his real name is Robert Clark. So Robert Clark was born in 1928 in Indiana. And basically when Robert grew up, he decided that he wanted to change his name. And that's because he already knew that he wanted to be a famous artist. He knew that he wanted to be super, super successful. And he was like, if I stick with the name Robert Clark, no one is going to remember my name. He thought that it was boring. He thought that nobody would remember him. He basically thought that it wasn't going to work for somebody who wanted a lot of like a lot of success. Okay. So he decided to change it. And he basically started telling people, I want you to call me Robert Indiana. And as soon as he did that, people started remembering his name. He became more successful. And so his plan was really working. You don't have to do that to become a really successful artist, but he just came up with this idea and it worked out really well for him. So Robert Indiana lived until 2019. That means that he was 91 years old when he passed away. He barely passed away one year ago. And basically his entire life, even when he was elderly, he continued to make a lot of different art pieces. So he's got a really, really interesting story because of his name, because of how long he worked, and because of how different his artwork was. Okay, before we take a look at that artwork, I wanna take a look at a couple of these pictures here. This is actually a picture of Robert Indiana when he was really young. He's about two or three years old in this picture. And then when we take a look at this picture, this is a picture of him already like grown and already very successful. Okay, so when we look at this one, we know that he's a successful artist because he's got all these projects behind him. You can see him in front of his work table and he's looking straight into the camera. So this was probably something like for a magazine or where somebody wanted to take his picture. So here he's already successful as an artist and here he's just a little baby. All right, guys. So Robert Indiana was really, really famous for something called pop art. Okay, and pop art uh, is all about bright colors, big shapes, and making sure that your work stands out, okay? So pop art is not like small, detailed, black and white stuff. It's not like that at all. It's kind of like the opposite. Pop art is all about big size, in your face work that's super duper bright and uses so many big shapes so that you can see it from loads of different places. Okay guys, this is all examples of Robert Indiana's work. These are some of his most famous things. And you're gonna see how his work follows kind of the rules for pop art. So the rules, I know art doesn't really have a lot of rules, but this is how they define pop art. And that's how he became a pop artist, okay? So you can see all this stuff in Robert Indiana's work. You can see that he's got those bright colors He's got those big shapes because he likes to use letters and he has a lot of circles and other shapes in his work. You can also see down here, he's again spelling something. It's a little, it's a little hard to see. It says hope, but um, even though it's a little bit like tricky, even though it's playing with your eyes a little bit, it's still pop art because it's got those big shapes, those bright colors, and it's so, so in your face. Okay, same thing here. A lot of people might think, oh, there's nothing special about that. All he did was like paint some numbers. But that's not true. It's pop art. So you can imagine these things are huge. Like these, when this is just a picture, 
This is not the real thing. So when you look at these, they're not this big. They are huge. They are like as big as I am, okay? And again, they are super bright colors. They are super noticeable. And every single number has a different style to it. All right, guys? So if you want, I'm gonna step out of the frame for just a second. And if you want, you can push pause on the video so that you can take a closer look at his work, all right? Okay, guys, so these images behind me are Robert Indiana's most famous works. It's what everybody started to know uh, that he painted or that he created, basically. So let's rewind history a little bit. So in 1966, Robert Indiana created this painting. It's called Love. It spells love, L-O-V-E. And it was super, super noticeable because it's got these bright colors. It's got um, giant, giant letters. And it was a really, really big piece, okay? So it was very noticeable because it was pop art, right? And basically, he sent this over to a museum. They said, Robert, you know, we want to show some of your stuff. Why don't you send us something? And he decided to send this painting. Well, he didn't really know that this painting was gonna go crazy. Like he didn't know that people were gonna be obsessed with it. So basically in 1966, as soon as this museum had put up the painting, people were going nuts for it. It started showing up everywhere. They were just obsessed with looking at it. And people loved it and it became so, so popular that he decided to turn it in to a sculpture. So the very first thing that came out of this series, the love series, was this painting that just got super duper popular. And then it became so popular that he decided to turn it in to this giant sculpture. So this sculpture, it's the exact same picture. You can see it's got the red letters. It's got the funny kind of silly tilted O. It's even got blue on the inside, the way that this one has blue in the background. So he, he added a lot of details and this took a lot of time. So this didn't come out right after the painting. It took a few years because it takes a while to create these, these big sculptures like that. But basically this sculpture is made all of like aluminum. So if you know aluminum foil, how it's like really thin, well straight like aluminum is pretty thick and it's kind of hard to bend. So this aluminum or, or this sculpture is all made of that hard aluminum, okay? This sculpture, you can also find it here in the United States. It's in Philadelphia, so it's on the other side of the country. But if you ever visited Philadelphia, you could go see this sculpture. Okay, guys? So don't forget, in 1966, that's really, really when his art just took off, when everybody loved um, all that he was creating. And it was because of this painting and this sculpture that that really started to happen for him. Okay? Don't forget also that the painting came first. And then it took a little bit of time before the sculpture could be made. But still, everybody loves uh, what he's created. And even like the, even the government and everything loved what he made. And so this even became a stamp, like a stamp that you would put on, on letters. Okay, that's how big and famous he was. So this really, really helped his art career. All right, guys. So for today's assignment, I want you guys to tell me your favorite thing that you learned about Robert Indiana and your favorite thing that you learned about pop art, okay? So it's kind of like a two sentence question, all right? Your favorite thing that you learned about Robert then your favorite thing that you learned about pop art, okay? So if you need any help, you can look at this sentence below. It says, one thing I liked about Robert Indiana was then blank. That's where you're gonna tell me your favorite thing you learned about him and then my favorite thing about pop art was blank. Don't forget to include that part about pop art. I love pop art. So if I was answering this question, I would say my favorite thing about pop art was all the bright colors, because I love to use bright colors. Or my favorite thing about pop art is that it stands out in a room. Okay, guys? So don't be afraid to really use your details and make sure that you're answering both questions. All right, guys, like always, you can return things to Flipgrid and you can return things to Google Classroom. It's really up to you. You can use the comments in Google Classroom or you can even like write it out and take a picture of it. All right, guys, if you are using Flipgrid, you use these directions as always. 
and I'm really, really looking forward to everything that you're going to return today, scholars. Let me know if you need any help with anything, and I'm excited to see your responses. Bye!